So let's investigate exactly what this power consists of. What are its qualities? And what do those qualities bring in concrete terms to our communities, our workplaces, and to the world? Well, the first is compassion or empathy. Now, it means having the strength to step into the shoes of another, even those we dislike, and understand how they feel and are motivated. This is not simply a quality for the meek and gentle. It actually prevents suicide bombing. I think of Gululai Ishmael in northwestern Pakistan, the most dangerous place in the world to be a woman. And what she does is she organizes and trains young volunteers, men and women, to go into the madrasas, locate the young men who are being trained to be suicide bombers, go home with them to their families, and discuss why the Quran would not approve of suicide bombing. These 223 volunteers have so far reached 4,000 young men at risk and prevented 250 suicide bombings. Thus, compassion is nothing soft. It's the drive not only to feel for others, but to take action, action to help them change. Third one is inclusivity. It means ensuring that the marginalized, the majority world of those without a voice are brought to decision making. This quality is rooted in the, in, in the insistence that we are connected, that the other must be included. And this can mean, as in the case of Germany's welcome of refugees, that you have to confront the anger and the prejudice of those who are afraid of diversity and those who would prefer to close borders and keep people out who are fleeing from violence and oppression. Listening is a quality that may sound easy. Most of us think we're good listeners, and most of us are not. When senior executives of one of the largest global luxury companies learned how to give their full attention, their full listening attention to one another, they reported, and I quote, what you taught us enables us now to resolve in 15 minutes what would previously have taken four hours of argument and still not been agreed. So listening is a key skill in transforming conflict. Fourthly, intuition. This is another quality that demands and demonstrates profound courage. I think of the Burmese democracy activist Aung San Suu Kyi. Before she became elected, she was often leading student protests in the streets of Rangoon. And one day she was leading student protesters, and they came around a corner and they were faced by a row of machine guns. And she knew that the young men with their fingers shaking on the triggers were as afraid as the students behind her. And so she told them to sit down. And she walked on with such calm presence that even when she heard the order given, release safety catches, prepare to fire, she still walked forward until she put her hand on the first gun and lowered it and no one got killed. And it was her presence and her use of her intuition in the instant that prevented a bloodbath. That's what we're talking about. And that has to be practiced and trained. Lastly, interconnectedness. It's the longing to nurture and protect our planet and her resources. The arrogant notion of man's conquest of nature is being replaced by the realization that we need to respect, safeguard, and help regenerate the planetary life of which we are a part. 
This is evident in the refusal of millennials to work for companies with outdated values. This is leverage. By 2020, those born between 1980 and 2000 will form 50% of the global workforce and 50% of the consumer class. And surveys show, and this is really fascinating, that an overwhelming 75% of them, many of them in this room, put in their priorities people, planet, and purpose before profit. They consider environmental protection, climate change, resource scarcity, and biodiversity loss as their number one priority before the amount that they earn. So they have huge leverage when they're going to get a job. We call these five qualities feminine intelligence.